Okay, we got the pool heater already put together with the tank heater on low. I get about a 15 degree increase in the water. I got a, a little pond pool pump on there that pumps maybe the water a little too quickly to get a good uh, to get a better heat transfer, but I'll break it down. We got the, the top on it, then I got a shield on it to keep the heat in and then to keep stuff from falling into it or keep stuff out of it. So that's pretty much it there. I can't get that that cover off it without taking the hoses off, so I'll do another video on the breakdown. There are about 75 feet of copper coils in there, and then I'll do a better discussion on the next video about uh, how it works and possible improvements. Today we're going to start a new project. We're going to make a pool heater, a homemade pool heater. The kids go swimming and every year it gets cold and it takes so long for the pool to heat up. So last year I used copper coils and I put them over my barbecue. So this year I figured it would be a little more economical to use a propane heater like this one. This is the 360. I used to use a, a, a sunspot, I think it's called, but it doesn't give off a nice large area of heat. So this one gives you 360 degrees all the way around. I bent up two 3 8 coil copper sections, and they're going to go like that. And now I got my third one, and as you can see, when they come... They're not really bent to the diameter that you want. Now this copper has been heated on the barbecue, so it bends a little funny. It's not, uh, doesn't have its full strength as when it comes nice and shiny. So what I did was, I made myself a bending radius that gives me a couple inches on each side of the, the heater that uh, the copper can go down. So if I bend the copper just around this, it's going to kink. So what I did was I I grooved it out to the diameter of the copper. This is two pieces, so I had one half and a separate half, and I used a router to give me a radius of about a quarter inch on each, put them together, and it's about half inch or three eighths. So this helps me to bend the, to bend the tubing, and I'll show you how I'm going to bend this one roll here to a 14 inch diameter for the heater. All right, so I had it bent straight to come in and out of the barbecue, and I had used these um, plastic hose connections to join each individual coil. Now, it would have been better to buy like a 100 foot length coil, but uh, the store I went to only had these short runs. About these instead. So what I have to do is I have to bend it around. So first I'm going to start off by straightening out this piece. What I want to do is set it into my groove and then slowly apply pressure so that it conforms to the radius without kinking. And it works pretty good. No kink. There's a little deformation there but good enough for my purpose of a heater. second coil. The first coil is in the way so I put a riser block under there to allow the first coil to hang down a little bit. So I'm going to make sure here everything's looking good.
couple of coils hanging down so this one's no look big enough. So I go to two larger riser blocks. Now I have to once again rise it up again. Good enough for me anyways. I sell a couple different bending devices out there to aid, but I get a pretty good bending radius and consistent with that method. See we're pretty close to our 14 inches, 12, everything's the same, looks good. So now what we have to do is I have to join these copper coils together so that they'll fit like this and I'll get the most exposure to the infrared heat that comes off the sunspot or this 360 sunspot. Alright, so going to get ready to join these two together. These two line up appropriately as the coil winds in a uniform fashion. I guess I wasn't paying attention and when I bent this one up it's bent the same way so I'm going to have to uh, bend it and do an offset type of, of joint there for that one. But the big dilemma is solder or, or uh, silver braze which is a higher temperature soldering. Um, so that's what we're going to set up to do now. We'll clean, cut, and prep these joints to do a silver solder joint. And then silver solder comes in a nice little roll like this. And we have to use special high temperature flux as it is a higher temperature process than your soldering. So it'll be a higher temperature paste that won't dissipate before the joint is ready to be made. And the stuff we're going to be using is... Uh, silver alloy brazing kit, cadmium free, and what that means it's going to be food quality. Cadmium is a bit of a poisoning, but it does help the joint wet out in a non-food grade environment. And then there's 45% AG, and the flux is 060, and we'll see how that works. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use your <coughs> regular little tube cutter. I already got one that I've cut the other day. This one has got a nice cut on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the corresponding one and I'll put it on. 
So the way these work well is if you don't try and take too big of a cut. So just light pressure. A little bit of a quarter turn, you go around once, twice, scores it. Another slight eighth of a turn, go around, it's going to score it again. Another eighth of a turn. You can take a heavier cut. What I mean by that is by putting a little more pressure each pass, but then you run the risk of, of deforming the pipe a little bit. We're not in a rush here. We'll just go around a couple times. Okay cuts it off nicely. Then we have a little bit of uh, internal burr in there, so we're going to want to deburr that. What I'm going to use is just a little deburring tool, right? It's going to go on the inside. It's just going to remove that burr off. A nice little bit of an edge. Make sure everything comes out. Next we're going to want to clean the outside of the pipe with a little bit of sand cloth, or usually use emery cloth, this is 120 grit sand cloth. What you want to do is take off all the oxides of the copper. That's why the copper turns color, goes dark, it's called a patina. It starts uh, patinating, oxidizing, and that's what gives its color. Here, nice and clean, good. The other side that I already previously cut. Go there and give it a nice clean up. Okay, so the way solder works, or this is uh, silver brazing, the way it works is we have to braze the temperature of the copper, I believe, to around 800 or so degrees. We're going to put some flux on the inside of the joint. The, the brazing or the brazing compound is drawn into the flux in the heat. So that's how we're going to get it on the inside. And what I got here is just a nice little coupling. Right? It's got a stop in the middle so that the tubing can't go too far in. We're going to want to make sure that this is clean in here. Even though this is new, it's still going to need a little bit of a clean. Typically you use a bit of a an internal wire brush. I don't think I have one that's 3 8 kicking around, so I'm going to do my best to get this in there and clean it up. And then we'll prep the joint and we'll make the, the braze. What I've done here is I've, I've uh, rolled it up so that it fits in a little better. It's going to give me an easier surface to clean. I've always found the couple seconds or minutes of cleaning gives you that uh, better chance of never having a leak. Because once you have a leak, it's sometimes a little harder to repair the leak than it is to take the time to make an initial clean joint. Now the flux also as it heats up is an acid and it's going to clean the joint as well. So it's, you've got two ways of, of prepping the joint. Some guys when they're new fittings they'll take the chance and not clean them but I was always taught why well, take chances. Okay so I think we're pretty good there. Make sure it fits on this one. Slides on nice. Okay, slides on this side. Slides a little tight. There we go. Okay, now we're going to get this up to, like I said, around 800 degrees or so. And the copper is going to come very, become very soft. So when I do make this joint, I want the joint to be in the configuration to where the copper is not going to have too much stress on. So I don't want to have them sitting up where they could sag. And then I'll line them up as good as I can. I'll put some blocks in here to line them up. And we'll make that solder joint. Or, so I keep saying solder, brazed joint. We'll come back in a second. Okay, I think we're just about ready here. Flux 
box looks like. It's a little dry. Just add some water. That should freshen it up. Get that joint in your view. Alright, we'll see if that is pretty good. So the flux is really dry, so I've had to put some water. I'm just mixing it in there. Shouldn't affect it being dried out. Bought this for a project a long time ago, and now it has um, it's dried out on me. Looks like I'm getting some paste there, and it'll probably be very hard to see in there. So when I add the barbecue heater with uh, copper tubing running through it, just on the regular barbecue, I was only getting about a 20 degree increase over three coils over my whole barbecue, which I had to have on high for the three burners. So I'm hoping having this. Um, this heating element is going to be a lot more efficient and I've only got two coils that I'm going to attach first and I'm going to see what the temperature increase is when I do that. So I think our flux looks pretty good. Put some in the joint. Now the, the idea with the flux is wherever you put it the solder is going to flow. So you don't want to get it all over on the outside of your joint or all over your pipe because it's going to encourage the, the, the silver braze, I keep saying solder, it's brazing, the silver braze to go in that direction. Now this is a bit of a caustic substance so I am going to wash my hands after. Right, make sure it's in there. So take out the excess, I need clumps of it in there, and put it on my, my joint. Now this is going to help take out any oxidization. So since I've cleaned the pipe, or the tubing, it's oxidized immediately. So as soon as I stop cleaning it, the air around us causes it to start oxidizing. So I'm just going to dress this up just in the areas that I want it to be. It's also very important to clean the flux after. All right, there we go. Put our fitting on. Hit the stop. Yeah, the fittings on. Good. Give it some room. Now, what I'm going to use for this process, I don't know if you can see there. Try and get it a little better again. Is a uh, oxy fuel torch. I'm going to be using an oxy fuel torch to do this process. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see. I'm wearing safety glasses. All right. So one of the key things is to make sure you get enough silver solder pulled out and in a configuration that you can utilize it to do the joint. So I'm going to have to go around the joint on both sides. Now it's not going to use a lot, but I'm not going to want my hand close to this heat.
like it's gone all the way around and wicked in. I haven't done this in a while, so not my cleanest joint, and I'd rather have a little more on there than, uh, than have a leak later. We'll let that cool down, and then as we get it going, we'll do a little bit of a test on it to see if it leaks. I'll bring it back when we put it in uh, into the configuration to go around the heater. Okay, we're back. What we've got so far is we have that joint silver soldered. Let's see if you can see that. I think it turned out pretty good. I did a little bit of a pressure test on it. Everything seems good. We're talking zero pressure, maybe 65 gallons per hour. And like I said, open-ended. So I don't know what that pressure would be, but it would be extremely low. We went with silver braze. I keep saying solder silver braze because of the elevated temperatures of the, the heater. We don't want the solder to fail and have a leak all over our heater or all over um, the ground, right? So we can leave it unattended. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to have this raised up off the ground approximately 28 inches to the bottom to engage the heating element. So we're using some material got some round tubing, three of them. When you, whenever you make something that stands on uneven surfaces, three points of contact, always touch. Whenever you have that fourth one, sometimes it'll wobble and that fourth leg won't touch. So we have three. They already got a nice flattened end with a hole on the end to, to fasten to the bottom. I've made a ring. What that'll do is it'll go on the bottom of the, the tube or at the bottom right then we'll have two or three riser bars and then I have to make another ring here uh, for the top and then what we'll do is when we affix the copper to this material which is steel there'll be galvanic corrosion so what we have to do is make sure that when we fix this to the steel there's a barrier so what I'm going to do is I'm going to either use um, copper wire or stainless steel and make a wrap around it so that the copper wire rests on the, the steel instead of the copper tubing so that there'll be a sacrificial material in between. Or if it's stainless steel, then the, the stainless steel won't have any corrosion or galvanic corrosion on it and it'll last. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make that bottom ring. Then we're going to make three uh, standoffs and then we're going to roll this around uh, to the same diameter as the bottom to accommodate our coil. Then we're going to affix our bottom coil to our tripod bottom and we'll almost be there. Okay, we'll start by getting our initial ring made by using our coil template. Stuff is pretty pliable. Pinch it there, use some finger grips, and then what we'll do is we'll massage these into a little, a little more round, a little round shape.
up now. Straighten those out a bit. I'm going to put some feet on the bottom of this so that it doesn't dig into the ground or cause any. I'm going to just use some quarter inch by one inch flat bar, make up some little tabs for the bottom, mark them out. I'll just make them one by ones. Use our Milwaukee Porta Band.
my little helper here. I've made the standoffs for the tubing, and now we're going to weld them on to the ring. Yeah. So I'll get it on the inside. So we are going to go and put the helmet on. The helmets are on, yes, for safety. He doesn't get to watch or weld a lot because he's too young, but just for a couple tacks it should be okay. spot. You want to try? No. Just have to pull the trigger. Okay. Careful with that helmet, okay? Okay. Our arms, okay? Some sparkies. Got hand gloves right here. They're a little big, but don't worry about it, okay? Don't worry about it. It's okay, they're a little big. Oh, I think I have smaller ones. You want the smaller ones? No. Yeah, they're good. Here. These are way better. Take those ones for dads. Okay, got them some nice new gear. Better? Yeah, they fit. Yeah. Daddy will help you, okay? Okay. Good enough? Yeah. I'll hold it and then you can pull the trigger. Wait, 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 wait. Now? Almost. My helmet's not working. Hold on. Daddy's helmet's a little too sensitive. Are you ready? Yeah. Pull the trigger, go. Okay, good, good. Okay, wait, go. Okay. Hey, did it. Want to do it again? Yeah. Just, don't hit the trigger, just hold this in. Shakalaka boom boom. Okay, I'm gonna put this one approximately in the way, 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 wait. Wait, let me move it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All done. Oh, hey, you can't drop it, honey. Uh -huh. Wow. Right. So we get you? No. You're gonna hit the trigger and you can put it in the hole. Okay, so those are done. Now we'll flip it over. And if we want to, we can go to this side. And do it. Do you want to do this side too? Sure. Sure. These are the helpers we need these days. Right, Weston? No, no, wait for me, sweetheart. We're going to use a clamp. Hold on, this one we want to kind of make, make a little straight. Well, we'll just... Hold on. Okay. No more.
Come right to the corner there. Ready to go. Okay. The next one. Boom, boom, boom. Almost a little more. Okay. Okay. Wait, 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 Mary. That's a welder. So welders connect steel by welding. Like this? This is a table. This uh, is manufactured by a steel mill. Alright, I'll bring it back when we put the copper roll in there. Okay, we're a little out of frame here, but now I've got the legs put on. I got them bent out at a, a little bit of an angle to give them some stability. I fitted this over the propane tank. And the heater and everything looks like it should work. So we're going to quickly tack these up and move on to the next phase, which will be installing the copper coil. Tacked up. Yes, honey. <clears throat> okay, so I uh, got the third roll going in the right direction. All I had to do was get one end to the other end, so feed it into itself. I'm going to do another silver braze joint here. I've cut and cleaned these two connections. This is brand new to the package, so it's very clean, so I'm going to do a quick clean on that. And then what I'm going to do is try and bring you in a little closer for the, the brazing joint itself this time, so maybe you can get a lot better detail on that. Alright, so hopefully you can see that a little better. Got my flux. It's kind of dried up again since uh, I didn't get the whole jar kind of wet. Should be good enough, we'll get it in there. Maybe we'll add some water. Some water. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't mix up the whole jar, so I guess the rest of the jar absorbed the, the remainder of the water. It's supposed to be a bit of a paste. So 
actually going to get it in there and it can flow a little bit. You don't want too much in there. So you hold it where you can see it, eh? We'll see how that works. Um, it's a pretty good fit. Bracing my coil so it doesn't roll around. Let's see if you're still in the screen there. All right, oxy fuel. And silver brazing again, we're going to stretch it out so we have something to work with so our hands aren't close to the heat. coupling. You can see the flux is causing the Copper to turn nice and shiny so it's cleaning, it's doing its job. Good. All right. Done.